What's going on, members of the body? It's your boy KP, and I'm back with another one. This video is going to be about um, spiritual understanding versus carnal understanding. Um, if you guys are watching my videos, appreciate the content. Please hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, you're welcome to share this video however you want. I was talking with a friend of mine, and at times we are all human. So this is a friend of mine that is on strong, strong me. He knew me way back when uh, I was an atheist. We've probably known each other for 15 years, and um, he would tell me all the time. He would be like, he like, Ken, you just got a good heart. Even though I was an atheist, you know what I mean? There was something just about me that I like to treat people nice. I like to see people happy. And even though I was, I was somewhat materialistic, I was very giving at the time. But needless, that's not the gist of the story. The gist of the story was we were discussing prophets in the Bible. And you guys... You know, read the prophets. I suggest you take the prophet books, take like a, a cliff note version and scam through them and look for the common threads of the prophet. So, man, the prophets are all God's children. They're all of his chosen people. Like God would choose prophets to warn people, to communicate with people. Um, you know, like Moses being the first uh, prophet. But it goes on and on, you know, Jesus was a prophet, but he was the prophet, God's son, the purest prophet there ever was. But one common thing about these prophets is, let me get back to you. So we're, we're, let me get back to, to, to the main point. I was talking with a friend and we're talking about the stories of the prophets. He's like, man, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet, like this, that, and the other. He's like, man, Moses had it hard. You know, he had to go fight with Pharaoh and get rejected and the people he was trying to lead out of the um, lead to the promised land they didn't want to follow him and this that and the other and you know and then I started talking about Daniel he was like I was I was like man Daniel you know what I mean like they threw that dude in the fire because he didn't want to worship a false god or he was praying to his god Yahweh they threw him in a fire you know like then they, then they get a new king that didn't know he was about it, about it, that he was uh, worshiping the true living God. So, you know, this new king wants to throw him in the lion's den and wants these lions to eat him up. And, and then, you know, we're talking about Jonah. You know, Jonah disobeyed God, got on this boat. They, you know, the, the boat was about to sink. They threw him off. A, a fish swallowed him up. And then my homie, he was like, he was like, Ken, you think, you really think Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights? And it just hit me, man. I saw the commonality of, of, of 40 days in the wilderness or like three days of darkness, the belly of the fish, three days here. You know, like that's a common one with, with, with Jesus, God's son, the prophet. That's a common one with, uh, with Jonah, three days, right? And, it, and, and something just clicked in my head. I was like, I was like, man, let's not focus on the carnal. Let's focus on the spiritual. And the spiritual, the spiritual meaning, right? You can't focus. You always have to focus on the meaning. If you read the Bible and constantly say, "What does this mean?" Not argue. You know, what does it mean on a spiritual level? Where where you're gonna take these words? You you want to take these words that are one sentence, and you want to take a parable and apply it to whatever you're reading. Like, man, once I take this scripture. And I find the spiritual meaning, it should explode in my head 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Because the word of God is, is the kingdom, and the kingdom, like, it's, it's highly leveraged. So, what I came out with was like, he's like, Ken, so was Noah, was Noah in the belly of the fish? I'm like, I'm like, does it matter? I was like, does it matter? What they're trying to tell you in all of these stories of the prophets is that prophets will go through the greatest tribulation periods. They will go through great suffering. And what allows them to go through that suffering is they have a supernatural relationship with the Most High God. The Most High God has shown them that, hey, you are my chosen. You are my elect. You are my prophet. Therefore, my hand is on it. 
and I am going to use you. You are set aside so that I may show my power through you. I may put you in situations. I may allow the enemy to come at you where he knows you should be dead based off of his actions. But in the face of him, you survived without a scratch on you. That is the theme. That is the theme about, you know, Daniel and his three homies in the fire walk, you know, walking around and they see another figure in there that's like the son of the man. He come out and his clothes aren't burned. He don't even smell like smoke because the most high God is with you. So he's trying to let you know that if you are a chosen elect in this lifetime and if you are being gang stalked, God is using you, man. He is using you. And the enemy, if your gang stalking is being cranked up, for me, the highest level form of a uh, gang stalking being cranked up is when I was, when I was experiencing uh, spirit hopping. And they weren't, it gets to a point where these spirits are hopping bodies and and they are, these spirits are hopping bodies and they are just basically wanting to know you're there or want, wanting them, wanting you to know they are there. So they mention little things about you. When that don't work on you, they start tormenting you to no end. These spirits know everything about you. Um, when you get to that point, what is going on is you are on the verge of seeing the kingdom of God. And Satan knows if you see this kingdom of God, you will be sold out at any cost of following him, delivering any message and executing any order he gives you because you have seen the kingdom. So you know that this existence is merely 5% of this physical realm is 5% of what lies in the spiritual. Uh, man, it's just, I could go on and on about persecution is how God shows his strength and power through you as one of his chosen vessels and choosing to follow the most high God is how you are risen and you are going to inherit the kingdom of Gert, the earth or the kingdom of heaven because of it. It is every father's will for his children to inherit the kingdom. Um, and, and, that's, and that's what it's about, man. It's about returning into our spiritual state. Um, and the reason why Satan is mad, you know, God has a paradise in heaven. And, and paradises are something that's spiritual. A utopia is something that's carnal. And that's what Satan is trying to create down here. Um, God created a way when Adam fell, right? Adam fell by disobeying God. So, you know, God used to walk with him every day. Um, he was holy, so he's in the presence of God all the time. God walked with him every day. That's what it means. Um, let's see. What's a, so when he fell by disobeying God, what he did was broke his connection. He broke his, his, his spiritual connection, able to be in his presence because he had sin on him now. So another way to look at this is, man, it's a parable. The story is always spiritual carnal, spiritual carnal, spiritual carnal. So Adam was created physical. He fell away from the spiritual. It's always do. It's always twofold when you're in the kingdom of the God. You got a spiritual citizenship and a physical citizenship. When you're in the kingdom of darkness, you only have a physical citizenship. So you got citizenship in one country. And trust me, this ain't the country you want to retire in. Because uh, everybody's saying the world's getting more and more wicked. Um, but let me get. But let me get back to it. So Adam had a dual citizenship. He fell, and then he ended up with a citizenship on earth, which is kingdom of darkness, right? Satan fell also. Satan had a, a citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. He rebelled against God, and then he fell. He was cast down to the earth, right? But 
This is why Satan hates you as God's chosen. Well, he hates all of God's chosen, but he specifically hates you because it's been uh, given to you to understand the mystery of God's will. You're chosen. That's what it is. You, you have the Holy Spirit or, or your vessel is equipped to understand this in a way that others are not. And you're going to preach the word to them and, and, and give it in, in a way that they might understand and see the kingdom for themselves. But God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son uh, that those that believe in him, you know, you know, the whole thing, they will not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't do that for the angels. Did he? They don't. They don't have a way back. They don't have a way back to get their citizenship and retire in the kingdom of heaven. And Satan knows this. That's why he's so mad. Like, you know what I mean? Could you imagine having the best thing going and messing it up? It, now, let me give you a carnal explanation. Everybody, I don't care if you male or female. You ever dated somebody that that you look back on it ten years ago and you're like, man, I messed that one up. Like that was the, that was way better than what I got through God. I messed that one up. Satan, <laughs> Satan realizes that, but it's like the kingdom. He realizes that sometimes 30, sometimes 60, sometimes a hundredfold that he really messed up. So like any disgruntled employee, he's an unemployed cherub, unemployed angel. So he's he's pissed off to, to say the least. So he gonna want to tear up, he gonna want to tear up everything he can on his way out the door, and his way out the door is pretty much going to, to hell. Um, so he wants to destroy the entire earth. He wants to take God out of everything. He wants to remove God's spirit, and God knows this. That's why he's like he's like my my spirit will always not, it it won't always remain with man on this earth. So like. Whenever that's, you have to look at all the scriptures together. So that scripture goes along with another one where like in Noah's day, where God looks around and he sees the hearts of men and all their thoughts were, were continuously evil. So once God's spirit is off the earth and out of the way, he just comes back and like, all right, I'm going to wipe it out and we'll start over again. But he gave us the setup plan in Revelation. You know what I mean? The, the, the revelation of Jesus Christ came down to uh, John through an angel and gave him the game. Instead of like, you know, the time that it's written of in the Bible, Noah, the flood, it was eight people. And he can't, we, God can't tell you everything that's occurred on this earth because there wouldn't be enough books to contain it all. But if you think about well, what happened to the pyramids? Like, how did how did that civilization get, civilization get wiped out? Like, what happened to them? Same game, man. Same game with the pyramids in Peru. Same game. Once the world becomes evil, God picks the first fruits, his chosen, that are still have the spirit of God, like knowing them, and then he destroys everybody else. He destroys them. And then he and then he bring and then he restarts the kingdom over. That's what you have to remember, man. And he even told you. It's always 12, too. When God comes down, he picks people. It's always 12. You gotta notice the pattern. When he came, it's like, man, I'm gonna get these 12 apostles and I'm gonna get it cracking. Right? Saying, you know, like, um, Mo, when Moses, you know, it led to the 12 tribes of Israel in, in, in the Old Testament. 12 tribes of Israel and they had 70 elders, right? New Testament. 12 apostles and then 70 elders. Like God does people the same way. And in Revelation, he tells you the same thing, man. It's going to be 12 tribes. 12,000 from each tribe. Just this time when he wipes the world out, there's going to be 144,000 people that have his spirit. They're going to have his spirit. And that's why people are waking up. You know, God has chosen at this point in your life as a targeted individual to wake you up. And this isn't, you know, the time you get woken up isn't when your targeting started. It's just the time he chose to remove the scales from your eyes and allow you to see. And when you woke up, you probably realized, man, this has been going on for a long time. I just couldn't see it. But he's had his hand on you. And this enemy has been trying to take you out by 
destroying your life or trying to get you to kill yourself. But, like, if he's so gangster with it, like, why wouldn't he just kill you? Because he can't. The only power he has, the only power the enemy has over you is any power the Most High God gives him. And that and, and, and the only way you open yourself up to the enemy is by committing sin. Because Satan's, Satan's a legalist. And you, and as a targeted individual, as a chosen elect, um, you, you, on the, you on Satan's, to use, a, to use a parable, you on Satan's FBI most wanted list. So anything you do is going to be watched. Like Satan watches all of my videos. He has all of his minions watch my videos all the time. And, like, you know what I mean? I'm human. Sometimes it's annoying. But most of the time it's flattering because, like, I know how, I know how my attitude can be to some people. They be like, man, that dude thinks he knows everything. I know a lot. I mean, I thought I knew a lot as an atheist. When the, when the Most High God removes a scale from your eye and you can come out with the word, man, it's, it, feels, it feels good to be able to come out with that word. And here's what Satan do. If I don't know what I'm talking about, just give me something better. But say, uh, read the comments on this video. It's going to be things like, well, I don't think you're right. Um, that's a difficult story. To That's a difficult explanation. Like, somebody knows this. I know all about that. Like, look, you don't have to tear me down. Just build it up. Matter of fact, just like build it up on your channel. Be like, hey, man, watch my video. I redid it on the same subject matter you're talking about but I gave it a different perspective. And if you have something good to offer, people will people will just naturally gravitate towards it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like offering somebody a a, a hamburger versus um, a ribeye steak. They're going to know which one's more pleasing and they and they're going to make their choice because people are wise when they're driven by a spirit. But anyway, fam, I hope this message has blessed you. Stay covered in the blood of Jesus. We are definitely in the last days. People's hearts are going dark and Satan's spirit is manifesting. It happens to me almost daily. Um, and here's, here's, here's the funny thing is lower ranked demons are getting more and more capable. Like, <laughs> like people are selling their soul like, it used to be, hey, man, I'll sell my soul, but I want to be something big. Like, I want to be a movie star. So he was like, all right. Man, all the good jobs are already taken. So if you're selling your soul now in this pyramid society, you're going to sell your soul to Satan and be like and be like a high-powered witch, a very high-powered witch with a minimum wage job. And then he's going to tell you, hey, you want to move up in the kingdom, you need to go sacrifice some sheep. And you're going to be like, ain't none left. Like, I can't get a hold of none. Like all you guys that's been doing this for the longest got all the sheep herded in. And he's like, well, it yeah, yeah, looks like you got got. But uh, stay blessed, fam. Until next time, peace.